Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah, welcome back to our class. Uh, we're going to continue our discussion on the uh, cosmic creation story and theory uh, from different perspective of all the uh, what we can say that uh, the civilizations that borders with uh, the Islamic civilization early on. So um, last week, right, uh, I've covered on the classification of uh, what do you call it as cosmic creation theory or story, all right, or creation myth of different civilizations, right, and uh, it can be actually classified into five, uh, which is either the story or the myth talks about creation from a supreme being, a supreme being or a creation through emergence, suddenly it was there, or creation by world parents, it means that two parties, uh, two entities, male and female, came about and gave rise to gods or, or beings that populate this, this cosmos. Or uh, the creation that came from a cosmic egg, or the creation from earth rivers. Now, we're going to see some of the examples, right, of this creation myth that follow this theme, this five theme, either from supreme being or emergence, sudden emergence, or world parents, or uh, cosmic egg or rivers. Now, let's start with the Egyptian creation myth. Now, the Egyptian creation myth, right, we start with Egyptian because the Egyptians, they are among the earliest civilizations. Right. Even though they have been preceded by the Sumerian, but uh, the creation myth of the Sumerian could not be found. We can only find the creation myth of uh, the Babylonians, who perhaps took it from the uh, Sumerians who came before them. Right. But the creation story of the Egyptians, they are more, more or less intact, and it's quite detail right uh, if uh, if you want to compare that to the creation myth of other civilizations early civilizations now the egyptians the ancient egyptians they uh, rose from four centers actually right from four towns or we call it as a nucleus where people gathered there and form towns and 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 also villages came about and and, and then after that came out uh, came from their civilization so uh, these four separate towns on, along the banks of the River Nile, uh, then after that coalesced to become the great ancient, uh, ancient Egyptian civilization. These four towns, they are the Thebes, Memphis, Heliopolis, and Hermopolis. Right? So four towns here. And these four towns, right, these four, what do you call it, city centers or whatever you call it, right, uh, they have their own different creation myth. Now, the creation myth of Thebes, right, and also Memphis follow the theme of the creation from a supreme being. So, the Thebes creation myth attributed the, what do you call it, the creation of this cosmos to a supreme god by the name of Amun, right? Now, those who are familiar with the Egyptian, ancient Egyptian stories, the pharaohs, whatever, the name Amun uh, crop up quite frequently. That is name of one of their greatest gods, right? So it actually came from Thebes. Then after that, uh, those people from Memphis and um, uh, what do you call it? The early pharaohs actually came from the city of Memphis rather than Thebes, right? From there, they, uh, they expanded and then after that, they uh, subsumed all other small towns and they created the great civilization of Egyptian, ancient Egyptian. And they also uh, built up that, that three great pyramids of Giza. Actually, that three pyramids of Giza were around before Nabi Musa alayhi salam by about 3,000 years, 4,000 years, something like that. Right? So it was there for a long time. So the ancient Egyptian civilization existed for a very long time, thousands of, of years. Now, uh, for the Memphis, right, uh, they also attributed the creation of this cosmos and universe to a supreme god by the name of Ptah. Ptah. Okay, and that is why uh, there are some pharaohs uh, that has the uh, suffix of Ptah. Something <coughs> of Ptah. For example... Merchant's note. 
Okay. Uh, uh, see, just now, disrupt my train of thought. Okay. Uh, for example, there's this pharaoh, right? Uh, the son of the great pharaoh of Ramses II. Now, Ramses II has been widely uh, attributed as the uh, pharaoh of Nabi Musa alayhi salam. Now, one of his sons, his name is Merim Fatah, right? Merim Fatah. So, Merim and Fatah. Fatah is the name of the god of of uh, Memphis. So, uh, when the Egyptian civilizations, right, they uh, expanded and they became one solid uh, civilization, they have different supreme gods. So, part of their supreme god is Amun and another one is Ptah, right? But of course, they created all other uh, minor and smaller gods. Now, the city of Heliopolis, right, they have a different version of creation. Instead of attributing it to a supreme being, whether it is uh, Amon or Ptah, they say that this civilization, or oh, sorry, this cosmos came about from a watery chaos, right? A watery thing. It's a water. And they say this water, its name is Nu or Nun. Now, uh, interestingly, right, we also have uh, a surah by, uh, that, by the name of Nun or Qalam. It starts with the letter Nun. And in that, that, that surah towards the end, Allah SWT talks about the story of Nabi Yunus alayhi salam who was uh, consumed by this great watery creature. We don't call it whale. We do not know what it is, right? But it is a great uh, aquatic creature. Uh, swallowed Nabi Yunus alayhi salam. Nabi Yunus existed inside that uh, creature's uh, belly or stomach whatever for a period of time. So interesting, the word known exists in Al-Quran, right? And according to the ancient Egyptians, right, uh, specifically the Heliopolis people, known refers to that uh, primordial water that from it came the cosmos. So from the water, right, uh, came the first god. Suddenly, there is a god. So this is called a creation from emergence. So there's water, then emerge from the water, a god they call as Atum. Right? And then Atum uh, could not find any uh, dry spot. And then so he created that dry spot. And then after that, he, yeah, this is the story of most of uh, civilizations. Gods have children and grandchildren. And they live the life like, like normal human beings with jealousies and fightings among each other. So the theme is that. So, uh, so this uh, Atum, right, uh, he had children from where we do not know. Right? Suddenly he had a son and also a daughter. And then from this son and daughter, it came about that this, his children, the son and daughter, got lost in that watery whatever, right? Primordial water. So then he, uh, this Atum, uh, he had only one eye. Said he had only one eye. So he detached his eye and sent his eye like a drone to find his, both his son and daughter. So then the eye found the son and daughter and he brought the son and daughter back. And therefore, he, was, he wept with joy so the tears that came from that eye came what? The tears that hit the ground, the solid ground that, that uh, Atum created uh, became men. So that is the creation myth of, of the uh, people in Heliopolis. Right? Then after that, uh, from his son and daughter came all the other gods, the gods of the sky, the gods of the underworld that they named as Osiris, Isis. By the way, Isis, right? Okay. The name of the ancient god of Egypt, uh, Seth and uh, Nephites, Gerb, and so forth. So all this, this pantheon of, of gods came from these two children of uh, the first god that appeared from what the watery primordial water Atum. Then Atum came, the two children, uh, the name is Shu and, and uh, Tefnut, and then came from them all the other smaller, smaller gods of the Egyptians. Now, then at uh, the city of Hermopolis, right, uh, they echoed or they, 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 they had this almost similar creation myth uh, with the uh, people of Heliopolis. So not much that difference. But instead of having a pantheon of gods that emerged from that primordial water, to them, right, uh, what emerged from that primordial water uh, were what you call it, aquatic animals. 
So these aquatic animals considered as the uh, supreme gods of of the Egyptian people back then. For the at least for the Hemopolis people. So uh, we have from the Egyptian creation myth two uh, theme. One is the creation from supreme god. Another is a creation from emergence. Okay. Uh, creation from emergence of out of nothing, then came the god Atum, right? Uh, who was the first god? Okay, now, so there is some echo, right? A little bit if you want to see, right? Uh, the creation myth of the Egyptian with what we have in our Islamic tradition, which is water, right? We will go into that later on because water plays a very important role in a central role actually in the creation story uh, from the islamic tradition i said tradition i don't say that whether that is the real story that the prophet ﷺ informed us told us or not but that is a story that is a tradition that has been almost accepted by many people many muslims including scholars and non-scholars now we move on to the creation myth of the babylonians right so we have the Egyptians on the southern part right, of the Middle East. And then after that, more to the African uh, continent. And then on the upper part of the Middle East, on the northern part, we have the Babylonians. And the Babylonians came from the Sumerians. Right? So therefore, we can assume, if you want to, that some of the creation story of the Babylonians, they were echoes of the creation story of the Sumerians. Okay. Now, the creation... Uh, myth of the Babylonians actually started with uh, water, so, right? Water, right? Just like the story of the uh, Egyptians, uh, according to the uh, Heliopolis people. So now, uh, because you see the Babylonians, right? They lived in between two rivers. That's why they have been called as Mesopotamian civilizations. Meso in, means in between, between two rivers. So water played a very vital and important role in their civilization. Without water, their civilization will decease, will, will stop to exist. So now, the creation myth echoes this uh, importance that they, 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 they place on water. So it started... Um, this creation myth starts with, with uh, these two beings right? they name the gift name as Apsu and Tiamat. Now, Apsu is actually a sea of fresh water, and Tiamat is the sea of salt water. So, you have two seas, right? Salt water and fresh water, and they are very familiar with this because, of course, the two rivers that flows across Iraq right now, which is what the, uh, the past is Babylonians, right? Uh, the Euphrates and the Tigris. Uh, these two rivers, they drain out to the Persian Gulf. So Persian Gulf, of course, salty and where they meet together is a combination of salty and, and fresh water. So, of course, their creation myth, right, um, took into account these two types of water, fresh and also salty water. Now, these two water mix together and of course, if you look at geography, they mix together in the southern part of Iraq right now. We call it as the marsh region where we have that Basra and Kufa over there. So they mix together and from this mixture of, of, of Tiamat and Apsu came one god, right? Uh, sorry, came a pair of two gods, right? One pair is Lahmu and Lahamu. And the other one is Ashar and Kishar. Now, Lahmu and Lahamu, there's no more story about that. They, were, they came about and then the story ended with them. But uh, Ashar and Kishar, Ashar and Kishar, this pair of gods, right, actually gave rise to the pantheon of gods, the multitude of gods of, call it, of the Babylonians, right? Now, uh, Ashar, because they are pair, Ashar and Kishar, right, assumed to be male and female. From Ashar and Kishar, they produce a son by the name of Anu. Then Anu gave, had a son by the name of Ia. Don't know who, who was his wife or, or how this, this Ia came about. So Ia 
was the grandson of this Ashar and Kishar. Then Ia, right? From Ia came the greatest gods of the greatest god of the Babylonians, right? By the name of Marduk. So Marduk was the son of Ia. Ia was the son of Anu, right? And Anu was the son of Ashar, Ashar and Kishar. And Ashar and Kishar emerged suddenly from water. So it echoes the, the creation myth of the Heliopolis uh, people. So there are influence between these two civilizations because they exist almost at the same time and uh, in the same geographical region, right? So we can assume that either one be influenced by the other, okay? So instead of for Heliopolis came uh, the, the god Atum, but in the Babylonian uh, myth, right, uh, the two gods, Ashar and Kishar came about and from them came the greatest god for the Babylonians, Tiamat, uh, sorry, Marduk. And therefore then Marduk came about and fought all other gods and became uh, the, the, the supreme god of, of all the gods. And therefore Marduk uh, was worshipped by the Babylonians instead of its father or grandfather or whatever. So Marduk considered as the one that uh, ruled supreme uh, among the Babylonians, right? So that is actually the creation myth of the Babylonians. So you can see, right, um, some parallels between the creation myth of the Egyptians and the creation myth of the Babylonians. Now we move on, right? We move on to a very interesting civilization, right? The Greek civilization. You know, they all exist in the same geographical region, region but a different uh, period of time. So the Greeks, they came much later than the Babylonians, right? And of course, much, much later than the Egyptians. But of course, the Egyptians existed all this time when the Babylonians came uh, into non-existence, right? They were defeated. They were not there anymore. The Egyptians remained strong, right? Continued with their civilizations until the Greeks and then after that, the Romans and the Romans defeated uh what do you call it the egyptians uh and then after that the egyptians were no more right so the greek creations right it started with a myth uh a story like the stories of civilizations before them uh the babylonians and also the egyptians now according to the greek creation myth okay this cosmos actually came about from nothing Initially, there was nothing, void, can't be explained. So the theme that the, uh, the Greek followed, right, is the, cre the theme of creation out of nothing, which is emergence. Nothing and then suddenly something emerged. And why is that thing that emerged? According to that, that creation myth, the, this void or nothingness, right, from there emerged a bird. Suddenly a bird came about. And this bird, uh, he had, or it had black wings. And they give the name for this bird, and this bird is called as Nyx. Now, this black bird laid a golden egg, and then it sat on the egg for a very long time. You know how long? Then from that egg, actually, emerged the first god of them, of the Greeks. And the first god for the Greeks is Eros, the god of love. From there came the word erotic and so forth, right? So eros means uh, the god of love for them. So uh, eros emerged from that golden egg. And then this golden egg broke into two. One half became the heaven and the other half became the earth. Then eros, right, caused these two, heaven and earth, to fall in love into each other. Somehow rather, right, uh, they were being assigned gender. Right, so there's a binary gender, male and female. So therefore, in this creation myth, the heaven is the male and the earth is the female. And that is why, right, people said Mother Earth, not Father Earth, right, because of this Greek creation myth, right. The female gender assigned to the earth, and also the male gender assigned to the heaven. Why is it so? Probably because the heaven is up there. Right, and therefore it protects the earth much like the husband protects the wife. 
So might be that is the possibility, right? Uh, that's why uh, the Greeks assign gender to earth and also to the heaven. And interestingly, right, um, the Arabs, they also assign gender, right, to the earth and to the heaven. Of course, the Arabs in Arabic language, they assign gender to all things, almost all things. 99.9% .9 of all names, they have genders, whether male or female, or sometimes both male and female. So earth, right, is considered in Arabic language as a female, even though the Arabic language for earth is al-arud, Ardun without the ta at the end. It's not ardatun, it's ardun, but it is considered as a female. And the sama, interestingly, right, even though, right, the Greeks considered that as male, but uh, the Arabs call, uh, or the Arabs considered the sama, the word sama, which means heavens, as male, a uh, female also. So both heavens and, and earth. Sama and Ar, according to the Arabs, both are female, right? So if you will read the Quran, right, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala followed the Arabic language. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala used the female gender for both the male, uh, sorry, for both earth and also heaven, right? Whether one heaven or heavens, right? Uh, a female uh, gender, or so I say, a female, uh, what do you call it? Uh, assigned as a female name, lah. Right, you can see that. Okay, now let's go back to the Greek creation myth. And therefore, uh, this heaven and earth, right, they fell in love, and from them emerge all the other creatures, right, the children and the grandchildren. Now, the children and grandchildren of this heaven and earth, right, now Eros is just one god, right, she or he or whatever, right, no gender assigned to Eros. Uh, Eros did not have any, uh, what do you call it, influence or role in the production of these other lesser gods, right? All this multitude of gods of the Greeks. But the heaven and earth, they were the one. <coughs> <coughs> they were the one who produced all these small, small children. Now, out of all these children of the heavens and earth came this one famous uh, god, right, by the name of Kronos. Okay, now Kronos had a great role in uh, what do you call it? Killing all other children, or all other god children. So uh, it actually wants to become, wanted to become. Uh, what you call it as a supreme god lah, in that sense. But then Kronos also married, right? And his wife is called Rhea. And from Kronos and Rhea, right, came all the children, right? And Kronos actually um, was afraid or jealous of all his children. So he, he actually swallowed all his children except one of, of his children, right? His son by the name of Zeus. Uh, now you know where Zeus came in, right? So Zeus, right, uh, was not consumed uh, and uh, swallowed by, by his father, Cronius. And then Rhea raised Zeus, right, secretly. And then when Zeus was strong enough, so Rhea taught Zeus how to uh, treat Cronus to, uh, what do you call it, as, as so that, so that, uh, so that Cronus, um, what it, surrendered all his children that he swallowed inside his body. So therefore Zeus, after that, tricked uh, his father and then his father Kronos, right, uh, vomited all his other children out. And then after that, Zeus killed uh, Kronos, right? Kronos was vanquished, was defeated. And therefore Zeus was considered as the hero of all the gods of the Greeks, right? So all this, these gods which they are the brothers and sisters of Zeus. They consider Zeus as their leader because Zeus saved them from being eternally inside the body of Cronus. Uh, so this is one of the uh, creation myth of the Greeks. Of course, there are other creation myth of the Greeks, but this is one of the popular creation myth of the Greeks. So it started with uh, Eros, and then after the heaven and earth, and then came Cronus, and then from Cronus came Zeus, and Zeus became the supreme god of all the Greeks. Okay.
Now, after that, like the Greeks develop their own signs and they become more objective right, in their approach in this world. So they actually, um, uh, what do you call it, as uh, uh, they came out with a new story, right, on how this cosmos came about, the creation story, which is based more on what they considered as logical approach, right? So they threw away all these creation myth, which is illogical, right, for them. And they came, they, they, they developed right, a creation story, which is more logical to them. So it started with who? It started with this philosopher of Miletus by the name of Thales, right? Now Thales, who lived in between 624 to 548 BC, which is about 6th to 5th century before Christ, right? Now Thales was, of course, influenced by the Babylonians. Okay, and he took some story Babylonian and the Babylonian creation myth came from water. Okay, remember all that, uh, what do you call it as swirling water, primordial water. And then Telly said, yes, the creation, this cosmos came about from water also. Now, it is not a, it's not a myth, it's actually something that is true and uh, there are evidence to it, he said, because if you look about, right, um, on, on, on land, you can see fossils. And these fossils were actually marine creatures, right? aquatic creatures. So therefore, according to him, these are the clear evidence that this cosmos, especially this earth, came from water. So the theme followed by uh, Thales is water. Creation came from water. Now, how did all this multitude of, of animals came about? He had no explanation for that, right? He just said that creation, all this cosmos came from water. So that's the first thing, water, okay? Now, came after that his, uh, his uh, student by the name of Eximander. And Eximander has a different, he had a different opinion. He said that according to him, right, this cosmos actually did not come from water but it came from something that is void, something that is empty, infinite. And that is where you can see that Azimander, uh, and, uh, sorry, uh, and Azimander, right? He followed the uh, creation myth of the earlier Greek because the earlier Greek said that there was nothing, right? Emptiness, chaos, then after that came that bird, right? So uh, Azimander came back to the origin story of the Greek that it's not, this cosmos did not come from water, but it came from nothingness. Then after that, uh, uh, emerged the hot and the cold and the difference, the, the gradation of hot and cold from that appeared all other creatures and all other things from the stars to the earth and to what you call it, uh, living beings. So out of nothingness came hot and cold. So now we have a second thing. Right? The first one, Right. His teacher, Thales, said that creation came from water. The second, uh, the second theme, followed by his student, right, creation came out of nothingness. Now, after him, Anazimander, came his student, right? Uh, his, name uh, his name is... is his name his is... Name is okay. His name is uh, Anaziminus, right? Now, Anaziminus... He had a different theory. Instead of water or of nothingness, according to him, this cosmos came from fire. From fire. Right? So, uh, from fire created the smoke. If the smoke is more dense, then it created, uh, from that came solid object. If the smoke is less dense, and it came about all this, what do you call it, the air and the, uh, what do you call it, uh, the sky, the heavens up there, right? So he had that, that theory. So you can see that now we have three things, right? Fire, nothingness, and water, right? So water is the teacher, the first teacher, Thales, and then his student said nothingness, and then the student of his student, right, uh, Anaximenes, said that fire was the cause of creation. Now you can see, right, the trend, for that four elements being talked about by the Greeks and followed by many people, um, 
and sadly by by many muslims also right that uh, this creation came from four elements and that is water fire and then air and then after that earth now where did this air come from uh, then after that right <clears throat> uh, yeah this air actually came from anaximander also right as in they said that because of the air that they produce from the fire if the air is, is less dense then of course uh, it created all the heavens now after that came uh, the heraclitus of of Ephesus, I don't know how to pronounce these things. It's a very Greek word, right? Very Greek to me. Now, he had a different view. He said that, yes, it's fire also. So now, uh, Heraclitus actually echoes the, the, uh, the theory of Anaximenes. So therefore, then we have all the three elements, right? That's being made popular by the Greeks. The fire, the water, and the air. Three elements, right? or the three source of creation. Right. Now, we have only the last element, which is earth. Now, where did this earth come from? Okay. Now, these four early philosophers, right? Um, Thales, and then his student, uh, which is Anaximenes, and, and, and then after that is Anaximenes, and then after that is uh, Heraclitus, right? These are the four early philosophers of the Greeks, right? Uh, and they proposed all those four themes of creation, water, fire, and, and, and air, and nothingness, they are considered as monistic philosophers that came out, that came uh, with the monistic uh, philosophy of creation. Now, the monistic, the word monist means one. That's why we have monotheism, right? So monistic means, right, uh, creation out of one thing creation out of one element or one source or whatever you want to call it, but one, right? But then after that uh, came all those philosophers of the Greeks that proposed the, what they call it as a uh, pluralistic uh, philosophy, okay? Which means that the creation came about not from one thing, from one element or one source, but it came from different sources mixed together to produce this cosmos. Now the first one, Right, who proposed this pluralistic approach of creation is uh, Empedocles. Now, Empedocles, he lived in the 5th century BC, right, and he proposed that this cosmos actually came from, yes, the three elements that were proposed by the earlier philosophers, right, which is fire, air, and also water. But then he added one more element, and that is earth. So, four elements right so now we know that the first one who proposed these four elements that that what do you call it uh suggested these four elements and make it famous to people he is that of a greek philosopher empedocles so he said that this cosmos actually consists of these four elements and how they mix together produce the different different things in this cosmos, whether sun or earth or human beings and everything. And everything consists of these four elements. So for human beings, we are consists, for him, right, we are consists of these four elements, much like the sun, the stars, and the earth consists of these four elements. So we have the sun, the fire, sorry, the sun, the water, what am I talking about? Fire, water, earth, and air. How they mix together, if one is more than the other, then it has influence on that person's character. If the fire is more than the water, then that person is, is hot-tempered. If that person has more water in it rather than the fire, then that person is more calm right, and peaceful. So that is his theory, right? Empedocles. So, but this, this theory, right, uh, this idea that everything consists of four elements actually seep into the Islamic tradition so much so that uh, many, uh, quite a number of Muslim scholars, right, when they talk about creation and when they talk about human nature, human, uh, what do you call it, uh, not just human nature, but human attributes, right, uh, they said it's influenced by these four elements as much as like the Chinese, right? The Chinese say we're influenced by two elements, the yin and the yang, 
right? The male and the female, which one is more, which one is less, and that determines that person's character, right? Whether to the left or to the right, or hot tempered or less or that or whatever, right? So that 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 story of four elements it does not originate from from the Prophet وسلم, or from the Quran, but it originates from the Greeks, right? Specifically, this philosopher Empedocles. Then after that is being followed, right? This story, right? This this theory taken by by other uh, philosophers of the Greeks. Okay, now then came another philosopher of the Greek, right? By the name of Anaxagoras, right? In the fourth century, fifth to fourth century BC, he agreed with Empedocles that uh, this universe. This cosmos were created from, was created from the four elements, but uh, he also believed, and he proposed that these four elements actually cannot mix together by itself, by themselves. Right? These four elements, the earth, the air, the, uh, the fire, and the water, cannot mix by themselves to produce all other creatures, but they need an entity. Right, to mix them together. And that entity to him is the supreme God that he called as Nous. Nous. Right. So this Nous, right, he according to him, was the one who determined right, the composition of every creature from these four elements. Okay. Now interestingly, right, uh, so you see, uh Anazogorus, uh combined the theory of uh, the earlier, um, what they call it, as uh, monistic philosophers that say that everything created from one source. Then after that, Empedocles, the pluralistic, said combine everything. Then Anisogoras said, no, I put on, I add one more element, which is God. Uh, and this God actually created everything from these four elements. Then after that came uh, another philosopher by the name of Leucippus. Now, Leucippus removed all these stories right remove the four elements remove the the story of god right uh, in that creation story of this cosmos but he said that that he replaced it with the theory of atom now he was the he was the first one who introduced the concept of atom atom from the word air and tom now the e right in greek means not and Tom or tum means divisible. So atom means non-divisible. So according to him, everything is created from this very, very tiny thing that cannot be divided anymore. That's why they have been called as atom, non-divisible. Right? A is non. So uh, he proposed the atom and then being taken by other Greek philosophers. Okay. Then after that, his student by the name of Democritus, he extended that atomistic uh, theory further and he said that this atom actually fill everything. Fill everything. So no space is devoid of atom. So if that space, there is a concentration of atom and therefore that space from that space emerge a solid thing. Right? If there is less atom and therefore there is no solid thing or a solid thing but a softer solid thing. So whether something is solid or less solid or non-solid, it depends on the number of atoms being packed together in that area, small volume of space. Uh, so we can see that the echoes of, of uh, modern science actually had its origin from the Greeks, especially the philosophers of uh, Leucippus and also Democritus, right? Uh, so the theory of atom, but sadly the theory of atom, right, was not taken up and made popular by many Muslim scholars back then, right? So they were more uh, enthralled and they, they, they are more interested, they were more interested with the theory of the four elements of Empedocles, right? Which is water and uh, the air and the fire and the earth, okay? So those are the the uh, what you call as Christian myth of these four early civilizations the Egyptians, right, the Babylonians, and then the Greeks, uh, which can be divided into the early Greeks and the later Greeks. Now, uh, later on, inshallah, we're going to cover the Christian myth of the Persians, which has some echoes 
with the Islamic uh, story, Islamic tradition, and after that we will we, we'll end with this chapter with the creation story of the Islamic tradition. Okay. Uh, so, but I don't, I never say that this, this story of the Islamic, the Islamic tradition, right, uh, of creation is the truth, right? There are a lot of, what do you call it, question marks over there, and then a lot of doubtful things in that story. But we need to go through that story because that story is being made popular by many, many scholars from one generation to another. And it's, it can be found in many uh, books of tafsir, actually. Right, so much so that some people thought that is actually the truth, the real story uh, according to Islam, right? The real Christian story according to Islam. We'll cover that inshallah next week, inshallah. So, Wallahu alam bisawab, uh, before we end our session, let's see whether there are any uh, questions. Yeah, there are here questions. Uh, okay, Ramses 2 and Ramses, is Ramses 2 and Ramses, Ramses 2. The same because I searched Ramses 2 on Google and Ramses 2 was the one that popped out. So the actual name is actually Ramses 2, not Ram, Ramesses 2. It might be a different uh, spelling, right? But the 2 there is the key because there are actually uh, a number of Ramses, the pharaohs by the name of Ramses. There's Ramses 1, Ramses 2, and Ramses 3, right? And it's been believed that uh, Ramses 2 is actually the pharaoh of Nabi Musa alayhi salam. Uh, it might be, right? Uh, there are quite a number of evidences that point that way. Uh, but uh, again, right, whether it be, he is really the pharaoh of Nabi Musa alayhi salam, only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. Okay, oh. which page of your book can I refer for today's lesson? That is in chapter one, right? No, sorry, not chapter one. It's an introduction. Right in my book, this book here, right? You can find it in the introduction, and that is just the uh, the creation myth of other civilizations besides Islamic civilization. Uh, how much truth is water cycle as we learn in school to Islamic context? The water cycle we learn are condensation, evaporation, and rain. Now, what we learn actually, right, uh, in our science book when we were small and this cycle of water, right, from, from uh, liquid to vapor and then condensed back to liquid. This is actually the, the cycle of the rain, actually, not cycle of the water, right? How rain is formed. So water evaporated because of the, the heat from the sun and then it forms clouds and then after that, clouds becomes denser, so it becomes lower and lower towards the earth and then because the temperature, right, decrease when the, when the cloud is higher up, Temperature is actually very, very cold, so it cannot form water. It still remains in, in vapor state, but as the, the cloud becomes heavier and heavier, it drops slower and lower towards the earth, and the temperature, when it gets lower to the earth, temperature rises, and therefore the water condenses to become liquid, and then it falls down to earth. So that is actually from observation, right? It has nothing to do with uh, whether it is the truth according to Islam or not. Right? Islam. In fact, if you look at Al Quran, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala mentions this, call it as the cycle of water on Earth's surface, right? Uh, how Allah Subhanahu wa Taala uh, brought the clouds together, and then from the clouds came water that came down. And uh, I'm still trying to recall that particular verse where Allah Subhanahu wa Taala mentions the cycle of this water. From liquid back to uh, in 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 its gaseous state, and then after that, condense back to its liquid state, right? So, uh, in a way, Al Quran mentions that, uh, but not really directly. You have to infer from that verse. Okay, were there any prophets sent to the Greeks to kind of rectify their belief? We believe that all nations and all people, right, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent to them warners, right, warners that warn them, that remind them of the truth, whether these people that Allah sent, uh, be they the prophets or messengers or the messengers of the messengers or the people or the messengers of the prophets or just good people who, who came and preached to them 
the truth, right? The du'ats, the preachers. So uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions this very clearly in Surah Al-Isra. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Isra, Wa in min ummatin illa khala fiha nadhir. Not in Surah Al-Isra, in the other Surah. Wa in min ummatin illa khala fiha nadhir. And there is no nation except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent to them warners. Right? So we believe that they were either prophets or messengers or warners sent to the Greeks. And that is why we can see the echoes of that uh, creation story uh, that came, everything came from the Supreme God. Right? And the Egyptians also. Right? So that is our belief. Whether we, have, we can find the evidence or not, that is the second matter. Right? Our belief does not need evidence to prove whether it is truth or not. Because the belief is something that we believe to be true in absence of any evidence. If there is evidence, there is strengthened that belief. Is Ramses to Fir'aun? Probably. But the word Fir'aun actually is the name given to the, uh, to the kings that ruled Egypt in the past. right? So Fir'aun uh, is just like Sultan or Raja or whatever. It's just the name. right? So uh, the Fir'aun of Nabi Musa alayhi salam he was a different Fir'aun that, that ruled during the time of Nabi Yusuf alayhi salam and the different Fir'aun that ruled Egypt during the time of Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salam because we know that Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salam he traveled to Egypt and met the Fir'aun over there, right? The, the king, the pharaoh that ruled Egypt during that time. And Nabi Yusuf alayhi salam was made a minister by the Fir'aun of Egypt during his time. And then after that, Nabi Musa alayhi salam, right? Uh, his adversary, of course, is the Fir'aun of him, which uh, many people believe to be Ramses II. Or some people say to be Ramses' son by the name of Meren Petah. Okay? So that is, that is some, what you call it, uh, some thought in that. Would you mind spelling out the last two Greek philosophers that you mentioned? They start with letter A. Okay, so um, that is in my book, page 9. The last two Greek philosophers by the letter A, that is Anaximander, A-N-A-X-I-M-A-N-D-R, Anaximander, and his student Anaximenes. <laughs> they like the word, they like the, the, the uh, prefix of Anaxi. So it's Anaxi, A-N-A-X-I, Menes, M-E-N-E-S. So Anaximander and Anaximenes. I don't know whether my pronunciation is correct or not now. Okay. All right. Then after that, uh, which surah is the water cycle mentioned in the Quran? I'm still trying to recall it. If I find it, inshallah, I will share it in the group. Okay. Uh, I will. I will look after. It. I will look for it after this. Okay. So that's about it. Uh, there is no more question, right? Uh, so thank you very much. Alhamdulillah. Uh, like I said, it's a very short and also free and easy session. Uh, so we'll continue inshallah next week, same time, right? 8 o'clock and for 45 to 50 minutes, we're going to cover next week, inshallah, the story, creation, myth of the Persians and the, crea the creation story. I'm not talking about myth, creation story of the Muslims. Okay. So I see you next week and we end our session with Tasbih Kafara and Suratul Asr. Subhanallah wa bika shadu wa la ilaha ila anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Al-Asr inna al-insana lafi khusr. Ila ladhina amanu wa amdu salihat wa tawasal al-haqqi wa tawasal al-sabr. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.